my dream was to play cricket for New Zealand. That's all I wanted to do. So I was a 17 year old, got chosen by New Zealand cricket to go to Lords for six months to learn about the game. So I went over to London as a 17 year old uh, many years ago and um, went to Lords and every day I played cricket, I trained cricket or I worked at the ground. But every day I did something that was cricket focused. And for me that taught me about my sport that I love, cricket. What's so special about it? The etiquette, the rules, the history of it. So then I followed on, I played first class cricket and I was lucky enough to be picked for New Zealand. And then I was lucky enough to be picked as captain of New Zealand. My very first test match, I was captain. So I played some international cricket um, while I was doing it, I was studying at university college. Following my cricket, I then went into uh, corporate marketing for Bank, Bank New Zealand back home. And then I decided that I wanted to get into sports administration. And I don't work a day in my life at the moment because every day I turn up to work, I'm doing something that I love, which is cricket. So that's how I've got the Sydney Thunder. And now I'm six months into uh, the role. I just want to talk a wee bit about where we're heading in terms of Sydney Thunder. What's important from a business perspective for us? So Sydney Thunder, um, we turn over around about uh, four to five million dollars, remembering that our competition runs for around about four weeks. Four to five million dollars. Our profit is about a million bucks. Okay. Most of our expenses are around players, so we have a salary cap of one point six million dollars. So part of my job is to make our players fit into one point six million. 18 players, I've got to make it work at $1.6 million a year. And then we're going to work out multi-year deals. So Shane Watson and I might want to play for us for three years. So I then need to extrapolate out over three years how much we're going to pay in that time. And then do some succession planning. So when Shane Watson leaves in three years time, who's going to take his place? And how am I going to bring him through the pipeline as well? So that's a major part of my role. Also a major part of my role is generating revenue through ticket sales. And we're getting as many people as we can to the ground. Through merchandise sales, through selling memberships as well. And then it's about how we interact with the community, which is what sport enables me. So we as a club want to be loved. And we want people to feel as if they're part of the Sydney Thunder. Actually, I love the Sydney Thunder for what they do off the field. Actually, I went to a game, I love the experience. So I love the club that inspires and unites our Thunder Nation. So Thunder Nation is our fans, it's our community. It's everyone that we do business with and interact with and talk with on every given day. That's our Thunder Nation. And we use the word Thunder term, Thunder Nation, because that represents to us um, inclusiveness. That's everyone. So a nation includes people from many different countries, many backgrounds, men and women, uh, young children, old people. And that's what a nation is. And so we want to be the Thunder Nation. And we want to do stuff that inspires our Thunder Nation. It might inspire you to watch a game of cricket. Fantastic. It might inspire you to pick up a bat and ball and play cricket. But actually it might inspire you to follow your dreams and do whatever your dream might be as well. But that's why we exist. So what would be our greatest imaginable challenge then? How would we know that we've got them? So our greatest challenge is to be the top sporting club in Australia. Better than all the AFL clubs. Better than all the football clubs, any other sporting club in Australia, Sydney Thunder is top. That's where we want to be. And that's our aspiration. So everything we do is geared. So we've got to start with why. Why do we do what we do? You need to start thinking about that. And so every day we focus in on our purpose. Why are we here? So in all of our work and progress meetings, we finish off by saying, what have you done this week that is going to make Sydney Thunder the most loved club. Because that's why we exist. But what are you doing tomorrow? So every company, every business in my view needs to start with a purpose first. Why are you here? Why is the school here? The school may well be here to develop outstanding leaders of the next generation. Outstanding leaders that are going to go out in the world, that's you guys, that's going to go out in the world and lead and do business and create a difference. That's why you do it. How you do it is here, through the courses that they run, through the lectures, through the teachers. That's how you do it. But we need to start with why, because that heats us up every morning. So we need to have a purpose. Have you heard the term VUCA before? Yes. Yeah, okay. So that's our challenge, isn't it? You know, it's a crazy book. Compared to me, 
I'm 50 years old, compared to me 30 years ago, when I was 30, the world has changed considerably. I see that in my children. I have four children aged between 16 and 20. Okay. And I just see the way they interact with the world. I see the way you interact as young people with the world. It's so much different than when we did. Well, John and I did. <laughs> it is much different. So we need to, if we're going to lead in this world, we need to be aware of that. And we need to turn what is a volatile, and it is volatile politically, economically, we see that. Uncertain. Where are we tomorrow? What's going to happen? Is there going to be a ballistic missile attack in the next two weeks? It's complex though, there's so many different things going on and sometimes we lack clarity. It can be ambiguous. I want to do this, I'm not quite sure how to get there. We need to help turn that into a world that's vibrant and that you feel you want to be part of. It's unreal. And this is fantastic, I just want to be a part of it. It's crazy and it astounds us. So we need to be creative about this. The best way to predict the future is to create it. Right, so my game, in my game, how do I do that in terms of cricket and sport? You know, I can't predict the future, but I can create it. So I can change the way in which I engage with the community. And I can change the way in which I run Sydney Thunder. And to do that, we've got some things that we need to ensure that we are. So we need to be authentic and genuine. We need to be respectful, generous and grateful. And so we're grateful for being able to work in a business that we love. We're grateful that we're able to put events on that 20,000 people come to at Spotless Stadium and look to inspire people. Um, so we call ourselves the Green Army. We're one club. We stand together as brothers and sisters and we're unified by our purpose. Our purpose is to be a love club that inspires and unites the Thunder Nation. That's what unites us. That's why all of us do it. That's why our players at the end of the game, for those of you that have been to a game at Spotless, our players stay for a long time after the game signing all the graphs. They do that because they care about our community and they're doing it genuinely. You know, Chris Green is probably the best one. Anyone know Chris Green? Yeah. Plays in our team? Yeah. Yeah, he's outstanding. He'll be there for 45 minutes. We lose a match, and I've said to our team, when we lose a game, that's when you need to be out there. Not when we win, it's easy when we win. When we lose, you need to be there because the people that are there for you are there genuinely. And they're there to say, hard luck, don't worry, I'll still support you. And so we need to be there to show the faith to them as well. Uh, we find a way. What do you think that means, we find a way? So if someone comes to me and says, we've got this issue, it's this, 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 my first reaction will be, well, how do we solve it? We find a way of getting through it. And we redefine normal. So that's about leaving. That's about saying what was normal, we now redefine and set the benchmarks. So some of our key success factors for Sydney Thunder are up here as well. So there are really there's six pillars to our organisation, to our business. And it's not all on the field. So fan engagement is obviously really important. Community engagement as well. And we have a number of community programs. So we don't spend one dollar on advertising our matches. We don't spend one dollar. Cricket Australia do, so you'll see some TV ads which Cricket Australia put on. We don't spend a dollar. We put all of our money into our community programs. So we run a Thunder Leadership Program where we go into schools, we work with students from migrant communities, and we use cricket as a vehicle, and we talk to them about finding their identity. How can they fit into their local communities with cricket, for example? How do we make them feel comfortable about the fact that they've come to Australia? from their country, India, Pakistan, Bhutan, wherever it might be. We drive, we drive our revenue through getting people to the game, but more than that, the more people I get to a ground that's spotless, the greater experience they're going to have. And the more likelihood I've got of inspiring those people to come back and be involved in our sport.